Hey folks, welcome back to Blue Max 6. Uh, this one is going to be part one of a three-part series on the anatomy of a flight. Uh, I'm on day three of a three-day trip down in South Florida and uh, down with a buddy of mine uh, who came along for the business part. And as I was going through and reading out uh, questions that I was answering on YouTube this morning, uh, he suggested that, hey, this would be a great opportunity to sort of capture the different parts of your flying and address some of those questions more specifically. So I thought it was a great idea. So the this is going to be part one, flight planning. Uh, number part two that we'll capture later on today is going to be around um, pre-flighting and programming the cockpit. And then part three is going to be uh, flying the plane. So on this one, I'm going to just go through a little bit of how I plan the flight, some of the tools that I use, and what are some of the questions I'm asking myself as I'm getting set up. Now, yeah, I'm flying a Honda jet and it's a great aircraft, but this process is going to be the same whether you're flying a Cessna 172 or a Cirrus SR22T uh, all the way up to, um, you know, turboprops and, and jet aircraft, right? So the first thing I do is, and I use ForeFlight. ForeFlight uh, works for me uh, mainly because I, it follows a process that I used um, in the military very closely, and I like the level of detail that it gives me. So, uh, yeah, I'm down in South Florida, but I'm going to look at uh, my departure airport of Miami, Opelika, and then my destination airport uh, back home in Richmond. All right, so as I look at that, um, you know, I see my start, my, you know, my route. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is obviously some route planning, but in general, I don't see weather. I see some pie reps that pop up right away. Uh, light turbulence is going to be a little lower than I plan on flying. And, um, and then a little icing on the west side of Florida, uh, probably in the preset. So the next thing I'm going to look for is routes. So I've got a route button here, and it's going to recommend either a recommended route or previously cleared by ATC. And I like that first ATC cleared route, the full two departure, Paytas intersection, um, ILM, LDL. So I click that and I'll say select route. That loads that route up uh, on there. Immediately I see, okay, I'm going to be over water for a significant portion of this. I'm going to be outside glide range of the coast. Do I have the necessary equipment on board? And I do. Uh, so I will go ahead and continue with this route. Uh, I've got a little briefcase there with an with an exclamation point on it that tells me that I'm going to pack that. It's going to pull all the current weather, notums, fuel prices, information that I'm going to need as I get from the strategic planning part down to the more tactical execution piece. Now it's mid morning right now, and I'm planning a late afternoon departure around 5:30. So one of the things that I'll do, I have four flight on my phone as well going to try to catch a baseball game this afternoon if it doesn't get rained out and uh, and and I'll go through and I'll probably be checking weather about every hour. Uh, one of the adages that we had in the military was time passes weather changes so uh, I completely expect that the weather is going to change and I want to I want to stay up on it if I need to change my departure time or change any other parameters of the flight I have enough uh, I have enough runway to do that. Okay so I take a look at this route um, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, I might have a little turbulence. Let me take a look at the profile view. I'm planning on flying at flight level 410 as the, as the profile view um, populates with weather. I see there's a little icing on the route, probably a, maybe a little icing right at departure, kind of at around uh, 14, 15,000 as I'm going through clouds. The aircraft is perfectly capable of handling that. Um, Clouds are down low. I am going to be inside. Uh, I've got a little turbulence, so I could expect some, some light turbulence. Um, but all in all, uh, the route looks pretty good for me. Right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, weight and balance. Right? So weight and balance is a big part of this. Uh, I, again, I have a friend down with me, guy Steve. Steve and I grew up together as military kids. We both had careers in the military. Um, and if, for those of you who have 
had that sort of military experience your whole life. It's really hard to have sort of lifelong friends, but we've always kind of been in similar areas and he's also a rated pilot. And so it's nice to have him along. We've done a lot of flying together. Um, so as I look at the weight and balance, I've got our weights in there. Um, I've got our baggage in there. Uh, he brought golf clubs, so I made sure that I know where I'm going to be putting those golf clubs. You know, I've got 60 pounds in my forward baggage compartment. Now, I'm, I, I'm not planning on putting much up there, but knowing the CG of this aircraft, I keep two 25-pound barbells up there, especially when I'm not loading down the, uh, the back of the airplane. So that helps me with CG. Um, I've got, I know how much, you know, fluids I have in the lav and publications I have in, in the, um, in the aircraft. So I can take a look and I can see that my, I'm going to be within CG from takeoff all the way to landing. Uh, so I'm pretty good with that. On the fuel, I did call the FBO this morning and confirmed exactly how much fuel I have on board. So I've got 2,790 pounds. I'll reconfirm that during pre-flight. And then when I get to part two of this series, you'll see that the Garmin G3000 will also ask me for that information. Uh, the summary up here, I take a look at the takeoff weight CG percent of MAC, 31.1. I'll note that number because I'll be using that number during my cockpit uh, programming time. So, okay, so the CG looks good and, uh, and I'm pretty happy with the route and the CG. The weather is not something that's going to cause me any problems at this point. I'll continue to check that. Um, the next thing I, I do is I'm going to look at the current weather at the airports and then their forecasts. So I go to the airport tab and the first thing I'm looking at is my, uh, Miami Opelika. It's currently marginal VFR. Uh, let's see, broken 1100. Um, winds out of the northwest at four. Okay. Um, but, but this is a, you know, this, is, this will lap. So I want to look at what their forecast is. So I look at the TAF. And as I look at the forecast, I see that there's an 11 o'clock uh, temporary, or we call them a tempo. Uh, that means they have a small period period of weather uh, broken at uh, 800. Um, for this afternoon, they're expecting marginal VFR, showers in the vicinity, and that's going to pretty much stay through the evening. So what I want to do is I'm going to keep close tabs on that to make sure if it starts to get convective, it's going to start to turn into thunderstorms. Are they isolated? Are they going to be along the route? Or are they going to be sort of predominant over the area? Um, also take a quick look. I see I've got a nice high pressure system kind of sitting over central US. There's a cold front off the coast. I'm going to be to the west of that. Um, I, don't, I don't see anything from a, uh, from a weather perspective that's going to impact me. Yep, still snow and ice up in uh, the northeast in New England. I'm not heading up there. Uh, so for our period of weather, our period, our period that we're going to be flying, it looks pretty good. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my destination airport, Richmond Executive. Uh, the current METAR is VFR 0209 gusting to 15. Um, now, Richmond Executive does not have a forecast because they don't have a weather forecaster, but when I tip, click TAF, it takes me over to Richmond International. And I can see through this evening they're planning on severe clear throughout the rest of the day, expiring at 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. So right now weather looks good. I'll keep checking up on that. Um, I did get a lot of questions about using FBOs. And one of the things I will talk about um, is, so the FBO that I selected coming down here into South Florida. So I looked at the airport where I, where I needed to have my meetings. You know, there were four uh, FBOs there that provided the services that I need. You know, a quick scan, I looked down and the program fuel cost at Fon uh, Fontainebleau Aviation uh, was very attractive to me. So, uh, you know, I took, I took a close look at that. But, but more than just the fuel price is I tend to go in and I tend to read the comments. Like other people that have used this FBO recently, um, what do they think? And, you know, sometimes you'll see, you know, you'll see more troll kind of comments. But, you know, I look for things about what were the services like, um, you know, what were they helpful? I will tell you that, you know, for us, it, it was been a fantastic experience so far. They could not have been more accommodating and, and really their proactive 
approach and reaching out to me as an aircraft. What time is your aircraft going to be online? How much fuel do you have on board? What services do you need? Uh, that's been pretty nice. So um, now I will tell you that back at my home airfield, so when I get back to Richmond Executive, you know, I chose Dominion Aviation. Uh, I, you know, I actually was at Richmond uh, International and I made the decision to move over to Richmond Executive specifically because of Dominion Aviation, just because of the, the customer service. Um, it was very, it was very price friendly, but that wasn't the, really the compelling piece. Uh, they went way out of their way to make sure that I, I knew that I was going to have a nice, um, nice experience there. And in the past year plus, it's been, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's a little bit about the flight planning. Like I said, I won't get into the risk assessment piece. I use an FAA risk assessment process. It's very similar to the risk assessment process that I used uh, in the military. I find it to be very compelling. Um, for those of you who are in flight training, you're going to learn risk assessment. Stick with it. Don't just use it for training in your check rides. Make it a part of every flight. Um, I was going to do a flight yesterday, just a reposition flight, and then the risk assessment piece uh, was just too high. And uh, it had nothing to do with weather. It had to do with me and the day that I had had and where the aircraft was, a very, very short duration flight, and uh, I made the decision to uh, stand down from that flight based purely on risk assessment. So make sure that you keep that as a, as a part of your regular uh, SOP. Okay, well, so that's it for part one for the flight planning piece. Uh, I'll capture getting into the cockpit and programming that cockpit and getting ready to fly. And then, of course, the fun part is flying the plan. And, and remember, it's always going to change. Um, thanks so much for continuing to show up for the channel. Your comments and questions have been fantastic. Been able to answer all of them so far. And uh, hope to be able to continue to engage with you. Thanks.